The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. McCoy? Yeah, well, we got two Mr. McCoys here. I'm one of them. Well, I'm Miss Everly. I'm with the Bluebird Swimming Pool Company. The old bird baths? Uh, no, no, regular swimming pools. I sell them. Uh, uh, may I come in? Oh, well, I, I wouldn't want to see you waste your time, Miss Everly. We ain't exactly a swimming pool family. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're just getting used to indoor plumbing. <laughs> well, I'd still like to discuss it with you. Yeah, well... See, I'm I'm all alone here. My wife and my grandpa, they're at a meeting, and my little brother and sister, they're both asleep. Well, I won't take up more than five minutes of your time. I promise. Well, I... Excuse me a minute. <laughs> It's, uh, my sin. <laughs> Lovely play. Oh, yeah. Thanks very much. It's a mite fancier than what we is used to in West Virginia, but we're sort of getting used to it. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, oh, won't you sit down? Well, thank you. You sure don't look like a traveling salesman. That's what everybody says. Yeah. If I was to see you on the street, I'd say you was an actress. Well, as a matter of fact, I was an actress up until about a year ago, but uh, it got to be a long time between parts, and uh, I like to eat. Have walnut? Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, ever since I've been selling, I've been eating quite well. Uh, by the way, have uh, you ever done any acting? Hmm? Me? Uh -huh. oh, 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 shucks, no. Oh, no, listen, you're a good tie. <gasps> Look at that profile. Well, I didn't even know I had one. Well, let's get on to swimming pools. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Ma'am, trying to sell me a swimming pool is like trying to sell a fur coat to a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know a producer in Hollywood who'd go just crazy over your smile. Oh, forgive me for harping on the subject. Oh, no, you go right ahead, harp. <laughs> uh, Mr. McCoy, you left your smile running. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, let's see, where was I? You're talking about my smile. <laughs> Now, the Bluebird Company went into business with the idea of making swimming pools available to people like you. Our motto is, if you can afford a backyard, you can afford a Bluebird. Now, you mentioned children a moment ago. Think of the safety angle. No more dangerous highways to cross to get to treacherous lakes. Why, they can enjoy themselves all summer right in your own backyard where you can keep your eye on them. Now, let me show you our 15 by 20 fiberglass plunge. No. Oh. Allow me, ma'am. <laughs> oh, what strong hands. Well, well, you're sort of fair to Midland. <laughs> now, Mr. McCoy, what would you say if I were to tell you that you could have this pool without laying out one single red cent? <gasps> Boy, that's frightening. Oh, don't be scared. I'm gentle as a lamb. Uh, yes, well, I'm sure of that. Now, let's see, where was I? 
Oh, yes. Now, this pool sells for $1,100. Your bank will loan you $900 with no trouble at all, leaving a balance of $200 for you to put up. Don't look now, ma'am, but you just run into trouble. <laughs> Boy, wait. When your neighbors see this beautiful pool and hear how little it costs, why, well, I'm going to get other orders. Now, for every order I get, I'll pay you $50. There. You see? Four orders, $200. No down payment. There's still that $900 we got from the bank. They might want that back, you know. <laughs> no, I'm afraid you're barking up the wrong tree, Miss Everly. Uh, Mr. McCoy, do it again. <laughs> oh, me shiver. <laughs> Boy, have you ever heard of a better deal? No. <laughs> No, it's a humdinger, all right. You know, I just can't believe it. Us McCoys having a swimming pool all of our own. Well, I'll make the arrangements with the bank tomorrow. All right. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, Mr. McCoy. Yeah. Good night, Miss Everly. You know, I only wish I could be here to see the happy looks on your family's faces when you tell them you're going to have a swimming pool. <laughs> Hey, we got us a swimming pool. A, a swimming, swimming pool. pool. <laughs> Dad, bless you. I ain't seen the lights in all my born days. Oh, boy. Grandpa's mad. What's the matter, Grandpa? No, oh, I just getting ready to work them stony edges right after breakfast. Somebody up and busted the plowshare. Grandpa, I don't know why you fool with that ground. You said yourself it's nothing but a bed of rock. Why don't you forget about it? I can't forget it. Them three acres is laying up there just laughing at me. I'm going to lick him if it's the last thing I do. Where's Luke? He's getting dressed. Grandpa, he's acting kind of funny. I'm worried about him. Why, just because he was asleep when we come home last night? Well, it ain't like Luke to go to bed so early. And this morning, he, he didn't say nothing to me. He just sat there and grinned, kind of sick-like. I think he's coming down with the shakes or something. I ain't coming down with nothing. You, know, you, you didn't do nothing but toss and turn all night long. Well, I just felt like tossing and turning, that's all. <laughs> no, to tell the truth, I was having nightmares. Nightmares? Yeah, I, I dreamed it was summertime, and little Luke and Hassie here, they was crossing the highway to go swimming up the lake. <laughs> when along come this here great big truck, and... Oh, my, it was pitiful. It was just pitiful. And then, then I woke up this morning, and I got to thinking about how dangerous it is, the kids swimming up at that lake. Oh, fiddlesticks. Little Luke and Hassie know how to cross the highway by themselves? Yeah, well, what about the lake? Did you ever see them water snakes up there? I never seen any. Yeah, well, you've been lucky. I tell you, that lake just ain't safe. Well, gee, Luke, they got no place else to swim. Mm, well... Sure wish you did. Maybe you'd like us to put in a swimming pool. <laughs> now, there's the best idea I heard a month of Sundays. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what you do, Luke. Right after breakfast, you go out and start digging. But get it nice and big so we can float our yard in it. <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa, it's funny the way it increases the value of your property. What the? You know, what, what you said. Wait, you mean the swimming pool? Doggone, every time you come up with that idea, I like it better. Oh, what's going on around here? Can't you quit talking about swimming pools? It ain't healthy. I wasn't talking about swimming pools. Well, dang nabbit, who is? Well, I think it's a great idea. Look at his little face light up. Can we get one of the diving boards? Now, Hassie, you quit talking about swimming pools, too, because we ain't a swimming pool family. Now, Grandpa, that there thinking is old-fashioned thinking. Well, if you can afford a backyard, you can afford a bluebird. A bluebird? I meant to say a swimming pool. Are you out of your mind, son? Well, it's, it's not for me, Grandpa. But if Kate and the kids has got their hearts set on it... Now, Kate, you get these highfalutin ideas out of your head. Grandpa, what are you yelling at me for? Now, give her a chance, Grandpa. What was it you were saying about how easy it is to get a bank loan on a swimming pool? Bank loan? Who do you think you are, Kate McCoy? I didn't say nothing about no bank law. Now, don't jump down her throat, Grandpa. What do we do? We just sit here talking about swimming pools. I ain't never heard nothing so all-fired foolish in all my born days. 
Hey, you! No. Now, I don't want to hear no more about it. Let's eat our breakfast. Luke, this lid is stuck. Would you open it, please? Gosh, Luke, you sure have strong hands. You hush. What's the matter with you? Gee, you better get a doctor for him. <laughs> Get on your toes, they're all beating you to the corn here. <laughs> Grandpa? Where you been? Down the gas station. Yeah? I was making a... making a phone call. What's the matter with that phone? Grandpa, I got something to tell you. Well, it's about time. What's eating at you? <laughs> well, I... Well, last night... Well, I can't tell you if you keep looking at me like that. <laughs> All right. Leave us here. Well, last night, I signed a contract for us to buy a swimming pool. <laughs> well, you can look at me now. Don't know as you can. <laughs> And this, what I heard was wrong. I ain't gonna repeat what I think you said, because if you didn't say it, you'd think I'm crazy, but I hope you didn't say it. There's a contract right here. For once in my life, I'm glad I can't read. Why'd you do it, boy? Well, you see, last night, this salesman come up to the house oh, and... Oh, held a gun on you, huh? Remember when Uncle Jim held a gun on that city fellow because he wouldn't pay five dollars for that pint of corn? The law made him give the five dollars back again? Well, this is the same thing. Come on, come on. Grandpa, Grandpa, she didn't pull no yeah, gun on me. She to pull the gun. She... She? she? That's right. You should be looking. Yeah. 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 I see. Grandpa, she made it sound like a... It was real good horse sense. Yeah, that's exactly what... Adam said to the Lord when he ate that apple. No, her being young and good looking didn't have nothing to do with it. I tell you, this here is a real good deal. How tall was she? Well, she come to about here. Now, look, we don't have to lay out no money at all. You see, they what got a the deal. Color of her hair? Well, it was sort of yellow. You know, they loan money quicker on a swimming pool than anything else. She smelled good, didn't she? Oh, like an acre of jasmine on a summer night. <laughs> Grandpa, I, I, I was thinking about the kids. You know, that lake's dangerous with them snakes in there. Oh, an ocean full of snakes ain't half as dangerous as a pretty woman with something to sell. I, I feel like a fool, Grandpa. Well, if it's any comfort to you, I once bought a set of automobile seat covers from a sales lady with yellow hair and blue eyes. What about it? I didn't have no automobile. Grandpa, that'd make me feel better if I didn't feel so sick. Well, come on, we're going right over there. Wait a minute, where, where are you going? We're going to call up that swimming pool company and tell them we changed our minds. No, Grandpa already tried that. What'd they say? They'll sue us. You was led astray by a pretty girl. Oh, no, now that ain't so, sugar babe. Well, the only time I was ever led astray by a pretty girl is when I married you. Luke! That's not what I meant to say. It doesn't matter, Luke. You don't have to say a thing to me again as long as we live. Now, sugar babe, you know you don't mean that. Hey, Luke, I'd like to have a little talk with Kate. Why don't you take the kids out on the front porch and sit yourself down for a spill, Eddie? Here we go again. <laughs> well, you can tell her from me, Grandpa, that if a woman don't trust the man that loves her, it's a pretty good sign that maybe she don't love him. What'd you do now, Luke? Why are we all going over here? Come on, Luke, huh? Kate, honey. I don't want to talk about it, Grandpa. Oh, you poor, unfortunate, pitiful little critter. Your world's come to an end, huh? You ain't got nothing to live for no more. Would you like to borrow him a gun? Oh, don't talk hogwash. Well, you can't go on. Your husband don't love you no more. He does so, Grandpa. Don't you say that. No, he does, eh? Well, maybe it wasn't your heart that was busted. Maybe it was just your female vanity. I don't want to talk about it, Grandpa. I'm not in the mood. Yeah, most people ain't never in the mood to hear the truth. 
But let me tell you something about vanity, Kate. When a man falls in love with a pretty girl and marries her, that don't kill his vanity, just his spirit. <laughs> they say vanity's stronger than a married man. It's wild, like a cat that ain't been fed. What are you talking about? Well, just how long has it been since you went to the trouble of telling Luke how strong he is and how good looking? Oh. He ain't been feeding your cat. So you had not to get too surprised when he goes purring after the first pretty girl that comes along and sets down a sauce of cream and says, Here, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> you know, Grandpa, for a man that ain't had much schooling, you're pretty smart. There you go. Feeding cream to the wrong cat. You're someone you gotta worry about. You gotta worry about getting out of this swimming pool mess, too. Yeah, that's right. While I'm worrying about that, I think I'll get that new plow and light into them stony acres again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Stony acres. I, I think I got an idea, Grandpa. Just a second. What's running through that female brain of yours? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it'll work. <laughs> While we're at it, we can see that that big cat of mine gets some cream. <laughs> like that type of female. How come your eyes is bulging out? I like that type of female. I'm Miss Eberly, Mrs. McCoy, and uh, this is Mr. Peroni, our uh, engineer. Nice to meet you both. Uh, this is Grandpa Amos. Hey, Amos McCoy, that is. Well, how do you do? It looks like this ground has been giving you a little trouble. Well, no, it's just they don't make shovels and plows like they used to, that's all. Well, if you folks will show us where you've decided to put your new swimming pool, Mr. Peroni here can get to work. Well, uh, uh, this is it, Miss Everly. Up here? Yeah, right here, this is it. Well, I would have thought you would have wanted it closer to the house, but uh, it's your swimming pool, isn't it? <laughs> Miss Everly, could I talk to you a minute? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, excuse us. Keep a straight face now. I'm trying, but it sure ain't easy. <laughs> Anything wrong? Oh, no, no, not a thing. But Mr. Peroni and I were just saying that we think you'd get a lot more enjoyment out of your pool if you put it down there. Why? Well, wouldn't you rather have your pool out of the sight of the, um, the pigs? <laughs> oh, if the pigs can stand the sight of me in a bathing suit, I guess we can stand them. <laughs> when do you expect to get the steam shovels in here, Mr. Peroni? Excuse me, Miss Eberly. Uh. Uh, uh, Mr. McCoy, couldn't we discuss this tomorrow in your, uh, office? Whose office? I ain't got no office. You don't? Well, you know, I just pictured you as an executive behind a, a big desk. That's the way you're pitching me, huh? Uh-huh. Grandpa? I'll be all right just as soon as I get out of range of that toilet water. <laughs> now you look here, miss. We want that pool right here. I'm sorry, but you folks are just going to have to pick another location. Well, I'm sorry, too, Miss Everly, but we have a contract that says that we get to pick the spot. And, and this is the spot we pick. And I can hardly wait to dive right into that good, pure water. Well, I'm just going to have to tell you folks the truth. Mr. Peroni tells me that this ground is so hard and so rocky that the cost of excavating it would be prohibitive. Oh, are you trying to get out of this deal, Miss Everly? Well, no, but... Well, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Well, now, that's a pretty how-to-do. Well, I, I'm afraid Grandpa and I have nothing to say about it. You made this deal with my cat. <laughs> my, my husband. He's the head of the household. Is he home now? Well, no, he, he went to town. But, uh, well, I could have him call you as soon as he comes home. Oh, would you please, Mrs. McCoy? I'd be so grateful. Well, goodbye for now, and I'm sorry. I'm awful 
glad you ain't still mad at me, sugar baby. I forgive you. But, uh, there's, there's one condition. Would you just name it, honey? You just name it. That you go to the phone and you call that Miss Everly and you tell her we don't want that pool. Name another one. <laughs> Come on, Luke, you can do it. I'll get the phone number. No, no, wait, now, wait a minute, sugar baby. Now, that ain't gonna do, do no good now. You we got us it. a contract. She ain't gonna back down. Yes, she is, if you talk real good. A and we all know there ain't a better talker this side of the Mississippi than you are. Well, I'm... Once you put your mind to it. <laughs> now, hello, Miss Everly, please. You jump on it with both feet, Luke. <laughs> Miss Everly, this here is Luke McCoy. Now, listen. Listen, we can't pay for that there swimming pool, so you better forget about it, because if you don't, there's going to be a peck of trouble. Yeah. You what? You will? You do? <laughs> well, that's fine. I mean, that's more like it, Miss Everly. Bye. Well? You never heard a woman put up such a fight in your life. What'd she say, Luke? But she seen I had her. She seen I had her right from the start. You just gotta know how to talk to them kind of folks, that's all. <laughs> you mean she's letting us out of the contract? Yeah, she sure is. <laughs> oh, Luke, I'm so proud of you. You sounded real manly. Yeah, well, it's time when a man's just got to do what he's got to do, that's all. You're so right, Lou. <laughs> yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> <laughs> 